Hi there. In this tutorial, we're going to do a night sky replacement. You know, one of the challenges with a night sky replacement is that quite often, especially with handheld camera work, you have the sky bobbing around. And if you're trying to get the sky to look like it's actually somehow glued to the horizon, uh, that can be quite tricky. So we're going to look at a couple of techniques for doing that right inside Media Composer. Okay, we're going to start with a short clip I shot of the Hoover Dam from up above, and I'm just going to drag that clip down to the timeline. And we'll rename this sequence something useful, like Night Sky Replacement. Okay, now I'm going to make sure I have the uh, link, the link tracks unlinked because I'm going to duplicate V1 twice. So I'm going to grab the V1 clip. Let's make sure these... Grab the V1 clip, then holding the Alt key as I begin to drag, it will duplicate that clip. And then I'll release and do the same thing one more time. So I've now got the same clip over top of each other on V1, V2, and V3. Okay, make sure I monitor V1. I'll select the V1 clip and we'll go into effects mode here. First thing I'm going to do is drop a Mocha 5 AVX plugin effect onto V1. And we're just going to use this for tracking. We're not actually going to do anything with this effect other than generate the tracking. So I'll go into the green green mode and then launch the Mocha interface. Okay, here we are. I'm going to create an X-spline over a small portion of the bridge. Now, in theory, I could also take a portion of the mountains in the background. That may give me a better result. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'll just grab something I know I can track very quickly. And we'll just uh, stretch out the tension on those to sharpen the corners. And now, starting at the very beginning, I'm going to track right through. Okay, that tracks pretty quickly. So once we're done, we're actually going to export the tracking data. Let's see that that's a nice track. So we're going to export the tracking data. As I say, we're not actually going to use the effect for anything other than this generated tracking data. So we're going to select the BC, BCC effect uh, center, which is basically just X and Y coordinates. We're going to extract into a file. I'll just drop it into a known location. You can see I've done this before. I'll save over this file, overwriting it, and then we'll close this and I'm going to save it regardless so that I have the, the basic setup saved into this clip. So the next step, we're going to look for S-Effect, which is Sapphire's Builder plugin. We're going to drop that on top of the V1 track. And this is how we're actually going to generate our night sky with a moon using the night sky effect and the new Luna effect for Sapphire 10. Okay, first let's uh, look for night sky. We'll drop that in place. Now we're not compositing the night sky with the background in this case. We only use the background to gain tracking data. So we'll simply overwrite that, showing the stars only. And then we need to perhaps brighten the stars a little bit, increase their size. This won't necessarily look very realistic, but it'll help for the sake of this tutorial to be able to see the stars clearly as we're compositing. Next I'm going to look up the Luna, which is the new for Sapphire 10. Get a fairly realistic looking moon there. I'm going to load a preset, however, that gives us a little bit of a of a glow ring around the moon. It'll look a bit better with this composite. Select 
moon with ring and then click load. There it is. And we can move the center of it over. We'll put it roughly in the top right corner. We'll have to play with this a little bit later. That's fine. Okay, we'll click OK to this. When I'm back in Media Composer, we can see the star field and the, the moon on the V1 track. Okay, we're going to add a third effect to the V1 track, the BCC match move. Hold the Alt key down so that we can stack this on top. So we're going to drive the match move with the tracking data that we saved to file in Mocha. We'll load that data here. Okay, now normally the match move is, uh, well, conventionally it's used with a foreground image that moves to a camera motion, for example, in the background. We're going to use it a little bit differently here, but first we're going to center up the, the move itself. So we're basically creating an offset to the set of coordinates that were brought in from Mocha to bring it sort of center the image again. And then we're going to move back up to the... the uh, sorry, we're going to move into the, the match move category here. And rather than compositing to... a uh, a layer below, we're going to actually tell Match Move to affect the filter layer. So what that'll do is it'll apply the X and Y offsets from the Mocha tracking directly to this layer. And we can drag through. It's a little bit jerky right now, but you can drag through and you can see how the, the moon and the stars are sort of shifting around. And the idea here is that they're going, they're going to shift around and follow the camera motion so that they'll appear to be stationary relative to the horizon. So they'll be moving with the horizon basically glued to it, and that's the whole point of, of what we're trying to accomplish here. So next we're going to drop a avid paint effect onto this V2. We'll just uh, zoom out a little bit there because we're going to put a, uh, a spline on here to isolate. At least it's almost a like a similar to a garbage matting technique where we're going to isolate a portion of the sky. And we want to basically tell the paint effect that this is the only this is the only part that we're interested in. So there's our sky, but we're going to use this. Uh, it's really quite. Uh, nice little feature, this magic mask, where we can select a color within the uh, the area that we just cordoned off. And uh, you can see how it's made a nice little, nice little mask there. Okay, we're going to track this spline so that it follows the bridge. We don't want the basically the bridge movement coming outside of the spline area. So we'll track a couple of points on the bridge itself and the uh, the tracker here is actually quite fast. This is not sped up, believe it or not. So it tracks those two points and basically we'll close this up. We'll see that the spline itself now is following that tracking. Now I see when I was setting this up, I made a little bit of a mistake here. I should have actually gone to the last keyframe and stretched out the the end of the spline because it was cutting off the end. But uh, when I was recording this, I actually uh, dragged it to the first keyframe. You can see it's, it still did the job, but you can see that it's basically shrinking the spline as I move to the last keyframe there. Anyway, this is fine. We're going to change the color of this magic mask to what's approximately a green screen color. 
and we're going to this is as much as we're doing with the paint effect but we're actually going to add another effect on top of this the bcc chroma key studio effect and so it's it's going to be working obviously on the on the area that we've now made green in the paint effect as if this were a green screen and that will cut out our little hole to see the stars and the moon in behind it so that uh, so we'll yeah we'll go down to the uh, the chroma key area and we'll actually select the chroma key color so the little eyedropper there perfect you know immediately see in behind it now funny enough we're not actually going to use chroma key in this way we're not leaving the compositing like this we're actually using this chroma key studio simply to create a mask which will be then used to feed into another sapphire builder effect and we can we can do things we'll come back to this perhaps in another tutorial to finesse this a bit better but uh you can go into this and and set up the, la the light wrap and, and whatnot. But finally, before we leave this, we're actually going to switch over to viewing the actual mat. And this is how we'll leave this layer. So this gives us a terrific mat that we can then feed into the V3 layer where we're placing a builder effect again. Okay, and we're going to tell the builder to use the first below as the mask, or matte input, and then the second below as a background. Now, in this tutorial, we're not really using background as a background, but this is a very convenient way of getting the star field into the uh, builder that's on V3. You'll see in a moment as we just click on the Edit Effect button, pop into Builder, you can see we've got a mask, which was the layer below, obviously the source layer we're working with, and there's our background layer. And we can simply use the background layer to feed into whatever we're doing. So first thing we have to do is add uh, mat ops. Um, and we need to tell the mat ops that we're actually working with uh, Luma, not Alpha, in the mat. And we're going to need to invert this, and you'll see why in a moment. Okay, next let's grab a cutout, which we've used in a previous tutorial. We'll just drag the cutout to a free space there, and we're going to connect the output of the mat ops to the cutout. And we're going to, funny enough, put the background into the source of the cutout. Okay, and you can now see in the preview there, you can see how we've got our the star field and actually the moon's going to need some repositioning but that's uh, that gives you an idea of what's going on so next we need to add a composite and what we're going to do is basically use the output from the cutout as the top layer and we'll use the rest of the image as the background so a little bit opposite to what you might have thought here we go and now you can see let's move this around a bit connected up and now you can see the night sky in the background behind the mountains which is exactly what we would expect uh, but the foreground doesn't look very much like night now you bleach bypass let's drag one on here it has a terrific preset which transforms daytime to nighttime so let's uh, load that preset there it is day to night click load and let's look at the final composition in here okay so there's your background night sky and you've got the bridge sort of eerily illuminated I wouldn't say this is photorealistic by any means but you're getting the the general idea I hope okay we'll click OK to that now we need to fix the positioning of the moon which is not so hard to do. We'll just click on the, remember the, the moon was created with the S effect in V1. So we'll open that up and we can actually get right at the XY positioning of, of the uh, Luna effect. 
and we'll just move that around a little bit just to bring the moon into view position it to taste okay well we'll leave it about there and we can actually exit out of effect mode and give this a render and take a look at uh, take a look at how it plays back now my machine's a little bit slow so I'm going to uh, render this off and I'll speed up the render a little bit just so we're not all staring at the screen for too long Now you're going to notice when we final, finalize the render here, I'll be able to play this back in real time. We'll scrub around. 660 feet. Okay, you'll see that the moon is glued perfectly to the mountains and the bridge. Which doesn't actually look all that realistic, because you'd expect as the camera moves that you'd get a little bit of a parallax effect between the moon. Now, we could have tracked the mountains, which might have made it a bit better, but we can sell this a little bit better by opening up the, um, the actual match move on the, on the V1 track, and let's zoom in a little bit and what that'll do is it'll it'll create an artificial parallax effect and it of course it's going to make the moon look a little bit bigger but we'll zoom in say 130 percent here and then we can go back into the s effect to the luma again and we'll just tweak the x and y positions of that moon and essentially what will happen now is the moon will move ever so slightly and, and the stars, but uh, in Moon in particular, you'll see it moving ever so slightly relative to the bridge as the camera bobs around, and that sells the effect just a little bit better. As I say, there's some, there are perhaps better ways to accomplish that, and tracking the mountains in the background might have might have been a better way to do it. But the purpose of this tutorial is to show you a number of different approaches. So here we go. We'll render this out again. Try to do it pretty quickly. When we're done, we'll uh, we'll zoom in here a little bit so you can see what's going on. Okay, now watch the moon relative to the bridge. You can see the moon ever so slightly moving in behind the bridge there, as if, as if there were some parallax. It's not 100% realistic, but it actually sells the effect a bit better. Okay, well that's night sky replacement using Mocha, BCC, and Sapphire, all within Avid Media Composer. Thanks for watching. See you next time.